Today I'm speaking with Rajat Paharia, founder and chief product officer at Bunchball and author of Loyalty 3.0. Please join us on this episode of Substance. Thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Brian. You got it. I'm excited to talk to you about gamification. I mean, yeah. This is one of the hottest things right now that everybody's trying to figure out. We all, as a part of our lives, have gamified little everyday occurrences, whether we know it or we don't know it. But here I'm sitting with the, as, as you've been dubbed, I think the father of <laughs> gamification I was just reading yeah. before we got on. And I'd just love to know about that. But before we get started, let's talk about, a little bit about just your background. Um, tell me about your family life, where sure. you live, where you're born and raised. Yeah, I'm a native Silicon Valley guy. I was born in Oakland, raised in Fremont. My parents are both engineers in the Valley, working in companies like Hewlett Packard and Xerox and others. And um, undergrad at Cal Berkeley with a computer science degree. I actually went in as a genetics major and hated Chem 1A so badly that I switched to undeclared and then a couple of years later switched into computer science and had a really good time and really enjoyed it. So stuck with that. And then spent five years working as a software engineer in the Valley for various mm -hmm. companies. And, uh, and then went back to grad school. I, it was good, because like at the time I left undergrad, I was uh, so sick of school, I was like, I'm never coming back. But then after five years of working, it was kind of like, it, it looked really good <laughs> to go back to school. So I went back to grad school, went to Stanford, got a, a master's degree in computer science, but with a focus on human-computer interaction. Wow. I had done five years of engineering work, and so I thought I understood code and technology pretty well. Now I wanted to understand people mm -hmm. and design. And so I did that. And, um, and had a great time, two years at Stanford, uh, taking classes and everything you can possibly imagine, and then TAing and teaching there as well. While there, I, I met a guy named David Kelly, who is the, uh, <laughs> uh, running the product design, the D-School program there. And uh, I TA'd for him, and I took his class, and we got along. And so then after grad school, when I was looking for something to do, I went and interviewed at a company called IDEO mm -hmm. and ended up working there for four years. I know it well. Yeah. So I did design and engineering work at IDEO, uh, worked wow. in a group called Smart Products that did consumer electronics and medical devices, mm -hmm. and then uh, helped launch a business unit called Software Experience Design. More and more of IDEO's work was happening in software mm -hmm. and, uh, and getting really big co companies that wanted software strategy and design work. And so uh, helped launch that business unit. And then in 2005, left, and, uh, and I wanted to own my own thing, right? As a consultant at a consulting company, you're, you're doing other people's stuff, and you throw it over the fence, and then you kind of hope and pray that it goes and sees <laughs> the light of day, but you never have any control over that, right? Right. So I wanted to go own something. So that's when I left, and I founded Bunchball. Oh, wow. And somewhere in there, you had three kids and got married. Yeah. And you've got a one-year-old, a three-year-old, <laughs> and a six-year-old. Yeah. So throw that into the mix. You're, you're a busy guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, like personal time. Somebody was asking me, a friend of mine who's thinking about having a family, was like, so do you have any time for yourself? It's <laughs> <was> like, no. <laughs> well, if you gamify it, maybe you'll have more time. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, so human, you, you said that you studied human uh, computing. Is human, that right? Human computer interaction, HCI. Okay. What? I wrote, I don't know if you know, I wrote a book on human to human. Yeah. And the social world and yeah. the, the marketing spectrum. But human, it t tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so HCI is basically this field of like user experience design, right? Putting people at the center and designing technology and other products and systems around them. And so uh, it, it really is, like if, if you've ever heard of somebody with the title interaction designer, as opposed to say graphic designer, right? Graphic designers are all about putting the pretty front end on things, but interaction designers are about behavior and about, um, about getting people, uh, creating compelling, engaging experiences so that people uh, want to in, in, interact with various systems. And so, you know, getting back to gamification, I actually believe firmly that gamification is kind of a, almost a subset of interaction design, mm -hmm. right? That maybe the term gamification won't be around in mm -hmm. five or 10 years, so that people will just call it part of good design practice. Right. Uh, but yeah, so that's exactly what it is. So um, a really great program at Stanford, mm -hmm. at, where it's, it was in the computer science department, and they basically taught you about, you know, sociology, anthropology, design, um, user testing, like all those kinds of things so that you could craft really engaging, compelling experiences for people. So do you literally just like walk down the street or drive your car and think, man, I could just gamify that? <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's an interesting question. Um, everything that we do with gamification is really starting with some sort of business objective or outcome that you're trying to drive. 
or a behavior change that you're trying to drive. And so like when we start a program with somebody, it's not about how do we make this more engaging or compelling? That's never the goal. Mm -hmm. The goal is always, how do we increase channel partner contribution to our pipeline by 20%? How do we increase email registrations by 100%? Mm -hmm. How do we increase sales by 10%, mm -hmm. right? Like they are very clear, like metrics driven type things. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes where I'm thinking about it, it's not like just driving down the street, but it's kind of where there's a behavior change that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. So I think about all the time with my kids, where there's like sure. plenty of behavior change that needs to happen, right? Yeah. Especially when they're like not behaving, <laughs> they're screaming and stuff. We need to talk more afterwards. I have yeah. some questions for you on that. And it's, you know, I actually read this book recently, a friend of mine recommended to me, um, uh, the Kasdan, I, uh, I might get the name wrong, but I'm going to be close. Yeah. The Kasdan method for parenting the defiant child, right? And a, a friend of mine who knew nothing about gamification said like, you know, my, my kid was acting up, my young son, a lot. And, uh, and I read this book and I tried it and it worked wonders. You know, wow. it was amazing. So I read the book and I'm like, oh my God, the book is gamification. Really? The book is saying that basically instead of like um, this battle of the wills that I'm constantly having with my kids and like the screaming matches and the punishments and the timeouts, yeah. instead it, it, everything should be about um, identifying good behavior and calling out and recognizing good behavior and showing the kids their progress toward a goal in good behavior and having like little goals every week and then a big goal at the end of the month that mm -hmm. they get some, and it's all about incentive and reward and recognizing and catching good behavior as opposed to bad behavior. And I was like, this is exactly what we do, but we do it on an automated scale. Is what I'm hearing that gamification teaches us to be better leaders? Gamification, absolutely. Gamification is is really at the end of the day, like our definition of gamification is, it's about motivating people through data, right? We've all turned into walking data generators. If you look at the amount of data you or I was generating ten years ago, five years ago, today, it's gone up exponentially, mm -hmm. like orders of magnitude, right? And that's because more and more of our lives have been mediated by technology. Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing our social life on Facebook, sharing pictures on Instagram. At work, we're in systems like Salesforce and uh, and Jive software and. Cisco WebEx and like everything is being mediated by technology. Mm -hmm. And it, so it used to be that like, let's say, take work for example. Mm -hmm. Work used to be very ad hoc. You know, it was a person to person, communication, paper, then it was email. It wasn't in formal systems, but now it's in formal systems. I do my CRM and SFA and lead management, everything in Salesforce. I do my collaboration in Jive. I do my ERP and SAP or Workday. Like it's all in these formal systems mm -hmm. and all these formal systems are throwing off data. Right. And smart companies can take that data and they can use it to motivate better performance. Mm -hmm. So people hear the word gamification and then they all they hear the word game, right? And they immediately think of like unproductivity or wasting time or you know some random fuzzy benefit, if anything, right? And and so people always ask like, why did the word why, why is the word gamification, right? Why is the word game in it? And it's because it came from the world of video games. Mm -hmm. Video game designers. Um, from the days of Pong 40 years ago in 1970 to Call of Duty and World of Warcraft today, right. have always lived in a world abundant and rich in user activity data. They've known every time you jump, you shoot, you die, you kill. Mm -hmm. And they've honed and refined the techniques over the last 40 years for taking that data and using it to motivate better performance. Mm -hmm. They've effectively been living in the future, right? And now we're just all catching up. We're living in this hybrid real digital world like we've just been talking about, throwing off all this data. And if you're a business owner trying to figure out how do I motivate my customers, my partners, my employees to perform better using all this data that I have, where are you going to look? Mm -hmm. You're going to look to the world of video games where they've had 40 years of experience at doing this and you're going to extract the best techniques that they've learned and take those and use them to drive uh, participation, engagement, loyalty, and a competitive advantage in your market. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think I was playing Halo about 10 years ago. I don't know yeah. if you remember that game. I do. And uh, no, no, probably about 12 years ago and it was just when I was newly married. My wife, I told my wife, I, w I was not a gamer. Yeah. I sat down to play Halo just because I wanted to check out what a game was like. Sure. And I literally had held off up, up until then. And I started playing it at night. And, and she said, hey, I'm going to go to bed. She came back downstairs at ready to go to work. I was still playing it. Right. And the reason I was still playing it is because I couldn't win the freaking game. <laughs> like, I sat on this game. And, and they figured out that I was a newbie. So every time I'd appear in a different place, 
uh, you know, every time I die, they'd just be there and they'd shoot me. Yeah. So I felt like I was not accepted in this game. So now right. I had to go to, into another game. Finally, I started figuring it out. And then I, yeah. at the end, when she came downstairs, I was like, look, I'm not a gamer. I got to stop this. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last time I started playing games. Yeah. Well, you bring up a really good point about the difference between games and gamification. Because mm -hmm. there is a difference. And, and again, like, because the word game is in gamification, people often get confused. But like with a game, you start with a blank sheet of paper, and your whole goal is to create something whose purpose is to entertain. Like, that's it. And, and, and so if your business is, um, if you're Pixar or Electronic Arts or Activision, like, that's great. That's your business. Uh, but that's, number one, that's hard, as a thousand failed game studios will tell you to make a good game. And then number two, when you have a, a game and you try and put in some message around it, like I'm trying to teach somebody something, or I'm trying to uh, push my brand or whatever, like advert games and serious games, that's even harder. It's like a game with an ulterior motive. So mm -hmm. if like making a game is hard, making one with an ulterior motive is like a thousand times harder, right? right. So that's, like, that's the world of games. It's all about entertainment. The world of, of gamification is about accomplishing a business objective, mm -hmm. right? So like we talked about all those, uh, those metrics I gave you um, about, you know, I want to increase channel partner contribution to my pipeline. I want to increase sales, whatever. Uh, and, and so you have an experience that exists already today. I have Microsoft Office. I have my ERP system, my Salesforce system, my social media system, and I'm trying to drive and amplify behavior around it using these mechanics that video game designers have used. And so that's kind of the key difference. Create something from nothing, entertain is a game, and then the other one is, I already have something that has some core value to it, and I'm just layering it or wrapping it in these mechanics that amplify my behavior around it. So how do you break down the different areas or the different ways of approaching gamification? Sure. Yeah, so there are 10 core gamification mechanics that we've pulled from the world of video games and apply. And this is at Bunchball. That, that yeah, at Bunchball, exactly. And I also covered these, I wrote a book uh, recently called Loyalty 3.0, How to Revolutionize Customer and Employee Engagement with Big Data and Gamification. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestseller, which is amazing. Congratulations. And thanks. And I just got copies yesterday of it published in Korean and Japanese. Wow. As well. Genki <laughs> That's all I know how to say. Yeah. Well, <laughs> apparently my name is very different. It was, <laughs> too. It was pretty funny. So anyway, in the book, we outline all this. Like everything we've learned over the last six or seven years, I put into that book to teach everybody about uh, this concept of motivating people through data. And so the 10 core mechanics that we have, the first is fast feedback or dense feedback, right? In a video game, you know immediately whether you're doing better or whether you're dead. And that helps you kind of grow and evolve and adjust your strategy and learn accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, transparency, you know exactly how you're doing right now, historically over time, how you're doing both individually and compared to your peers and the rest of the people. Then you've got things like, um, goals. You know, we all want to make a difference, to make a dent in the universe. And so having a goal and then being able to track our progress towards that goal is really motivating and compelling for people. Badges, which get a bad rap because everybody like slaps badges on everything. But all badges really are is a shorthand reputation system. Mm -hmm. They're a way for me to look at you and in an instant say, okay, I know your expertise, your yeah. achievement, your accomplishment, your commitment to this community. I can tell all that because we have this shared understanding of what those things mean. I get badges on my uh, Fitbit. Yeah, all the exactly. Time. And it's just such like it's the highlight of my day. Yeah, and, when I and get then a badge in my email inbox. And if you share that on mm -hmm. uh, Facebook or Twitter, I'm going to look at that and say like, I have no idea what that means. It doesn't mean anything, right? Because I'm not a Fitbit user. Mm -hmm. But for other people that are that are part of that group, they all know exactly what that badge means, mm -hmm. right? Because they mm -hmm. either have it or want to get it too. And so it's this shared understanding, this context that means something to everybody. You know, if I'm looking at like a, a Boy Scout with the badges and I see one with a picture of a cow on it, like to me that means nothing. But to somebody else in the Boy Scouts, it's almost like you double click on it and it's like, okay, I've raised an animal, I've visited a farm, I've taken the test. Like I know all this about you just from that one little picture. And so badges are a great way for indicating reputation, especially like again in the workplace where um, you've got distributed workforces and reputation mm -hmm. becomes very important. Who knows what and what do they know so I can assemble and build the right teams of people. They're also a way for a community owner to indicate to the participants, this is what's valuable to us. So mm -hmm. we're putting a badge around it. Then you've got things like leveling up, right? Whether I'm Premier 1K in United or Senior Vice President at uh, whatever company or level 70 in World of Warcraft, mm -hmm. that tells somebody something about me that I've accomplished over a long period of time some level of achievement and that I have the status and the benefits that accrue with that. And, uh, and what we can talk a little bit about status and what that means to people. Mm -hmm. Then you've got things like onboarding. Video games are really good at training you without 
training you, mm -hmm. right? They don't make you read a manual. They don't make you go through a training course. They make you learn by doing. Every video game ever made, the first five minutes, you learn how to play by playing. Mm -hmm. Even the really complicated ones. I mean, World of Warcraft is not trivial, mm -hmm. right? EVE Online, these are not like trivial things, and yet they don't make you go through a training course to learn them. That's kind of explaining Twitter right there. I think Twitter is one of the huge social platforms that people aren't understanding. And exactly. The only way to learn it is to actually do it, to tweet. Exactly, right? If you explain to somebody, like, you can tweet what you had for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Why would really? I do that? Yeah, exactly. And then you've got a competition, collaboration, community. We're all inherently social creatures, right? We want to share, we want to compete, we want to compare, we want to validate others, be validated. Mm -hmm. And then points as a way of tracking progress, keeping score, and then potentially even having a currency that I can take and I can spend. So you take these like 10 core mechanics, and all these are based on fundamental motivators of people. There's a whole chapter in the book dedicated to intrinsic and extrinsic motivation and what actually motivates people. And you take these and you use them in, you know, wrap again your, your content, whether it's your Salesforce automation system, your social collaboration system, your loyalty program, you wrap it in all these things, and you can drive and amplify behavior that drives the business outcome that you're trying to drive. What is one of the biggest values you've seen come through in, in, a, in a company for, for using a a product like this or, or to gamify their experience. Sure, yeah, I mean, it, so we, it's interesting, our customer base, we tried to break it down by vertical recently, and um, there, it's like it's all over. It's a very horizontal application, right? There isn't any one specific area, but so like some things I can talk about that we've done uh, with Adobe gamified the onboarding, the out-of-box experience for Photoshop during the 30-day right. free trial where before the people, they just kind of dropped you in the middle of the desert, open up this blank white canvas, see yeah. 10,000 And let's just say you, there in Photoshop, you don't just bold italicize and underline. Right, right, exactly. There's a lot more right. to that. Yeah, exactly. That. I mean, I was an interaction designer at IDEO for four years. Like, theoretically, I should have known how to use Photoshop. And I was using PowerPoint and Paint when I left. It was pathetic, <laughs> right? And it was because I had the same reaction most people do when you open it up for the first time. You're like... Hello. What do I do? I don't <laughs> even know. Like, how am I going to start? So we gamified the out-of-box experience there, uh, taught people 12 key pieces of functionality, mm -hmm. object removal, red eye removal, teeth whitening, and they saw four times as many people buy wow. at the end of the 30-day free trial. Oh, that's great. So it makes complete sense, right? Like, I now feel the confidence in spending the money in this tool that I'm going to be able to use it to see the value. Um, other examples can include... Um, you know, uh, we work with ma many major media companies around uh, like loyalty programs for their TV shows and uh, driving up page utilization, viewership, uh, sponsorship revenues, things like that. You've got internal enterprise social networks, uh, mm -hmm. social collaboration platforms like IBM Connections and Jive, mm -hmm. Salesforce Chatter, We've been able to drive 1,000% increases in wow. utilization of those platforms, increases in sales, service levels, oh I mean, you name it. So it works. It works, absolutely works. Um, just a, a, a few minutes left, I just wanna um, talk a little bit about where it's going. Yeah. What, what kinds of things are going to be revolutionized? Because this is endless, right? Yes. I mean, there is no end to gamification. We've been dealing with it since the beginning of time. We're, we're using it now a little bit more thoughtfully with data today. Where to, where can this go? Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting question. Um, you know, I, I mentioned at the beginning that like, I think, I think this is firmly a part of interaction design and that it's going to be considered that going forward, that any, that any designer who's not taking advantage of all this data that's coming into the system and using that to create a more engaging experience in the next couple of years is going to fail is gonna lose, right? This is inevitable, what's actually happening, that as a business owner, as a software designer, as an experienced designer of any kind, uh, you will have made the user interface as pretty and as good as it can be. You will have eked out every last bit of operational efficiency out of the flow, and then what do you have left? You have your people and your ability to motivate them to perform better. Mm -hmm. And that's like cold fusion, right? Like mm -hmm. there's like an unending supply of what people will do if you can only motivate them, if they want to do it. So hopefully, if you remember nothing else about gamification, first off, it's about motivating people through data. And the second, it's about turning things from I have to into I want to, right? So all of a sudden, you see people doing learning above and beyond what's required. You mm -hmm. see them going through training courses. You see them uh, closing more deals more quickly because they want to do these things. Mm -hmm. So you've eked out the, the operational efficiency. You've made the user experience best. You have people and your ability to motivate them. And what do you have that can help you do that at scale and repeatably and in an automated way? You have the data, right? And so this is going to happen. It's happening right now, but it's inevitable that if you don't do this, you're going to get left behind in your business. So just overall, I think all the macro trends are heading in the direction that this is just going to be 
a part of good design practice mm -hmm. for anything that you ever build. And then in, in particular areas or use cases that I think is really fascinating, the employee space. Uh, so if you look at the consumer space, every major website out there is running like uh, Omniture or Adobe Digital Marketing Suite or Google Analytics, and they're tracking all the page views mm -hmm. and the funnels as people go through. They are taking all the activity data that their consumers are generating as they interact with their website, and they're using that to optimize and drive lifetime value out of that consumer experience. Mm -hmm. Now, in the workplace, we're all living in these formal systems now that are all throwing off data, and it's all going into the ether. Mm -hmm. Nobody's paying any attention to it yet. They haven't caught up. They haven't kind of grokked to the fact mm -hmm. that they now have access to all the same data that the consumer guys have mm -hmm. for their employees, and that they can drive employee lifetime value mm -hmm. and get a thousand times more benefit than the consumer guys do, mm -hmm. given how much they're paying their employees, right? Oh, yeah. I think there's an amazing uh, opportunity in that space to take all that data that's coming out of those systems and use it to drive employee lifetime value. I couldn't agree more. Employee advocacy is huge. Yes. And as we use gamification more to drive these internal experiences and bring people closer together, right? Yeah. So that's really what we're trying to do. Absolutely. Build the brain trust within, within our company so that we can actually grow these things a lot faster and a little bit more nimble Yes. Um, with a little bit of fun. A little yeah. bit of a fun experience. So I would, I you know, I'm really excited to talk to you here today. Unfortunately, we're a little bit out of out of time. Sure. Um, but where, you know, where can they find you, and where can they find your book? So the book, uh, you can find out more details about the book at loyalty30.com, and there you'll find you can download the free chapter one. You can see the the outline, all the the blurbs, and uh, have a link to Amazon to to get it. And then the company bunchball.com. And, um, and me personally on Twitter, I'm at uh, Rajat Rocks. Perfect. Well, thank you again. I really appreciate it. Great. Thanks, Brian. All it's right, been cheers. a pleasure.